Here you go, Shannon. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Different perspective on my, on my phone today. Had some technical difficulties getting on here, but we all made it. We're all here today. So today was chapters 23 and 24 of the screw tape letters. Uh, and let's get started with the prayer first. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this awesome, beautiful weather that we've been having. And we just pray that this book study is very fulfilling and awesome, and that we just have a great rest of our week. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, mm -hmm. Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, so chapter 23. And there we go. So the main thing about chapter 23 was, you know, that, you know, that I learned from, you know, this chapter and uh, it seems as though C.S. Lewis was hinting at it is that Jesus is real. And uh, in this chapter, he, uh, Screwtape talks a lot about how he, they try to make people believe that God or Jesus is not real, which is false. Okay. So one of the biggest things, you know, uh, about this is that, you know, um, in the screw tape letters, in that beginning of this chapter, he talks about how uh, his patient is too, you know, perfect with the spirituality, that it's too hard to completely remove it from his life. But what they can do is that they can corrupt it. So corruption comes if the devil cannot remove spirituality entirely from the person's life. So in the, then they go into detail, he goes into detail by saying that this is awesome for them. So he says, a spoiled saint, a Pharisee, an inquisitor or a magician makes better sport in hell than a mere common tyrant or debauchee. So what he's saying here is that because the person was living such a great life of faith and all of a sudden, little by little, was uh, turned the wrong direction, uh, they the devils admire that because that person was uh, captured quite well, actually. Okay, so, so there's, how does the devil do this? There's many different ways. So the first way that the devil does this is that he makes people view him, Jesus or God, solely as a teacher and then, and then conceal the very substantial agreement between his teachings and those of all other great moral teachers. So, but for step one, what they do is they make him a teacher, but his teacher, his teachings are just like any other things in the world. You know, he's just a teacher. That's all he is. And then for number two, he says, uh, we make sophists, uh, he raises up Socrates to answer them. So, you know, just thinking of Jesus as a Socrates guy, uh, answering all the things that Socrates says. Number three, our third aim is to destroy the devotional life. And I'll go on more into detail with this in a bit. Then number four, religion of this kind is false to history in another sense. No nation and few individuals are really brought into the enemy's camp by the historical study of the biography of Jesus, simply as a biography. Now for the fourth one, they, that is a big one that they try to hone in on. Because as you see from this picture in the right, you know, um, like it's a very classical artist painting. Uh, it seems very historical and just old and not up to date as, you know, some other paintings may be. This is the depiction that some people may think of Jesus or uh, God and stuff like that. They make a, may think of him in this way because, you know, uh, all of the historical paintings that they are uh, that's out there, you know, there's not many um, out there that are more modern. So that's what they may think. And now, during the slide, there we are. So back to the third point, which was, let's go back here. Third point, their third, our third aim is to destroy the devotional life. Okay, now, so with the third point, you know, he, the devil is trying to, you know, change, you know, Jesus' appearance, you know, in our minds, you know, when they try to do this thing. He says, uh, for the real presence of the enemy, otherwise experienced by men in prayer and a sacrament, we substitute a merely probable, remote, shadowy, and uncouth figure, one who spoke a strange language and died a long time ago. Instead of the creator adored by its creature, 
you soon have merely a leader acclaimed by a partisan and finally a distinguished character approved by a judicious historian. By simply, you know, skewing the person's mind and thinking, oh, you know, Jesus is just history, you know, he's not real. Um, uh, he, he, the person develops a different perspective of who uh, Jesus is. And as a result, you know, the relationship, you know, is between us and Jesus is broken more. So, you know, Jesus becomes a probable remote, shadowy and uncouth figure uh, who spoke a strange language and died a long time ago. So, you know, that's another big thing, you know, he died, you know, some people might not think that he rose from the dead because it's such an interesting thing, but he did. And the, the devils especially don't need to believe that. But this is just the big way that, you know, Jesus changes appearance when the devil skews our mind. Okay, and that is basically the end of chapter 23. What are your thoughts on this one? Whoopsies, wrong screen. Any thoughts? I, I, when, when you said that, right at the end there, when you said that um, people that, the make me uh, people that don't believe that he rose from the dead that they believe he's still dead. Mm -hmm. Um, I a couple times I've I've, I've heard people uh, I've like seen videos and watched videos and stuff um, where people say you know if if you can't see the miracles in your life you're looking for a dead Jesus. Mm hmm. That's a good point. Because if you can if you can't see the beauty in life and the miracles in your life then and you think Jesus is still dead and all hope is lost and he was just some guy that died like over 2000 years ago what does it matter your life is going to be different than when you think that than when you view jesus as the risen lord and he is still alive mm -hmm. and you are making all things new every single day then your perspective on life is going to change because yeah you know, the, the, the 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 yeah the vision changes mm -hmm. you turn from like a negative perspective to like a very positive upbeat right. perspective mm -hmm. looking on the bright side of things mm -hmm. Good. Any other thoughts? Can you go back to the last slide, Shannon? Yeah, go back to the last slide, sure. This one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is definitely, um, I thought a lot about this. And if Jesus was just a great teacher, then our faith is in vain because our faith is that concrete faith based in the resurrection. Um, like Shannon, or like uh, Danielle was alluding to there um, and talking about like, we, we are people that believe in the resurrection, the Easter people. And as St. John Paul II says, Alleluia is our song in that. And that's that proclamation that Christ is risen. Um, if he's just one of other moral teachers, then you can put him on the same shelf as like Socrates or Plato mm -hmm. or, um, uh, I don't know, um, anybody else that you have up there. But the fact is that while his moral teachings are in line with some of the teachings from ancient Greece and different things, especially on virtue, there's a major difference there um, in the fact that he rose from the dead. And I think the, the main point that that's made, you're kind of alluding to this on point four, is no one's ever been won over to Christ by reading books about his life simply from a historical perspective, by studying him historically. Actually, a little bit of information, the early 1900s, there was a big push in, quote unquote, um, trying to debunk the Gospels by looking at the Gospels where anything miraculous was looked upon with uh, like the viewpoint of doubt. Um, and that's what a lot of biblical scholars started to do that were like trying to like focus overly on Jesus's humanity and disregard his divinity. Because what happens is if he's just a man and he's still dead, then as St. Paul says, our faith is still in vain. So the devil tries to get us to doubt the, the beauty, the miracles um, in everyday life, like Danielle was alluding to. But also here, um, Jesus is not a person to be known about. Um, but a person to be known as or in relationship, um, that we get to know Jesus through our prayer, through our devotional life. So yeah, once the devotional life starts getting destroyed, that prayer, there's that whittling down into just a historical figure. 
and like just focusing on the history um unless it penetrates the heart and you start to get to know jesus himself because he is alive right we can get to know personally the relationship with jesus because he is alive um and that's obviously what the devil tries to get us away from trying to create that distance almost that doubt where we live as if he's still dead um because we read about him we don't read we don't communicate with him or try to relate with him in our prayer and in our everyday lives and i think if you just go back one more slide shannon um this entire idea feeds into so the, when spirituality gets removed then you get that whole historical aspect where people just kind of separate that but what you were saying earlier about like if you can't remove spirituality if the devil can't do that he'll try to corrupt it and we see that in the pharisees and everything right where in the name of god they start doing wrong things or they're they're puffed up with pride in different things or um they they make it they make religion their agenda instead of a, a relationship with jesus losing that focus so spirituality gets compromised and twisted in that sense um, so we want to avoid both pitfalls, obviously, and, and how this comes into play is definitely in uh, humility of what we've been saying. So that's what I was kind of thinking about, how this all kind of ties together, because we, we, we are spiritual people, and we're also grounded in reality, um, meaning that Jesus is God and man. We're incarnational. If we get way too spiritual, we start forgetting about the, the nitty-gritty of everyday life and being able to love one another, to care for the poor, to care for those. If we get too um, tied into the fleshiness, then we lose the perspective that Jesus is God and is worthy of our worship. And it's always in the middle of Jesus being God and man, which is mystery um, in itself. And it's one to pray on, to think about, and to cultivate relationship. So really, to come against these things that screw tape is saying needs to be done to corrupt the Christian. Um, it comes down to humility and encounter, um, personal encounter, not, not the thirst for knowledge, not the thirst for um, power, but the encounter of love that we see. So I know I kind of rambled on a little bit, but I think uh, that's what I was kind of thinking about tying this together. Um, in this chapter. Yeah, it's really good. I liked all the uh, uh, stuff you had to say. It's awesome. And okay. there we are, finally. Yay. Okay, so chapter 24. The main concept of the, in this chapter is of spiritual pride. And he, up here on the screen, we have a quote from our good old friend, C.S. Lewis. He says that, you know, for pride is a spiritual cancer. It eats up every very possibility of love or contentment or even common sense. Ooh. This, you know, when I was uh, thinking about how I was going to create this presentation this afternoon, uh, I immediately looked up his E.S. Lewis, you know, pride quote or something like that. And I'll, or, you know, maybe I just searched spiritual pride and I clicked the images and then his quote came up like, oh, this is absolutely perfect. Because all pride is, you know, not good for people, including spiritual pride, which to tell you the truth, I kind of had no idea existed, but it actually does when you make think about it, when it, you uh, think about it deeply. Okay. There we are. Okay. So in the beginning of the chapter, it talks about, you know, the patient's girlfriend. And, you know, they, I think the, her devil is named, uh, what's his name? What's the devil's name? The devil's name is Slum Trumpet. Seems like an interesting name. So Slim Trumpet uh, was on a search to find uh, his patience, which is his uh, girl, the girlfriend. You know what her, is her flaw in her Christian life? So he discovered and told this information to Screw Tape, who is now telling this information to Wormwood, that this woman's flaw is that she has only ever known Christianity and virtuous beliefs. She may mis mistake for true faith what is only habit. You know, sometimes when you get the routine of doing something like every day and weekly and monthly, it becomes part of your routine. 
And sometimes that routine, you don't really realize that you're doing the routine. Like you don't really realize the big impact. You're just going because you have to go, you know, you know what I mean? Um, uh, and she might begin to not talk to you. What are you saying? I think it was mentioned in an earlier chapter how like um, when the guy was first going to church and then one type of prayer was just like saying the words but not really mm -hmm. thinking yes. about the prayer. So like that kind of habit. Oh yeah, that's totally perfect example. That's awesome. Yes, perfect. So this is what the woman's fly is. But, you know, it kind of contributes to the uh wormwood's patient because you know wormwood's patient is in love with his girlfriend and so everything that she does you know he looks and aspires to be and you know um particular from her flaw of that um he you know her family and how nice and kind they are uh he ten tends to you know think that you know prideful about himself you know where he is in you know his life so uh, Screwtape says, the new circle in which he finds himself is one of which he is tempted to be proud of for many reasons other than its Christianity. It is a better educated, more intelligent, more agreeable society than he has yet encountered. So, you know, the spiritual pride in this sense is that he thinks that, you know, Christians are like the best of the best, you know, uh, and also he thinks that, you know, um, thinks badly about other people who have other religions, which is, seems to be a big pitfall, uh, you know, um, in his uh, life because he doesn't know that it's going on to begin with. And also Screwtape says that, you know, her family, you know, is really nice and so kind and stuff. And he begins to say, uh, oh, you know, I can never be forgiven by them because they're so nice and kind. And this goes back to the, a few chapters ago too, with when he was um, always like, oh, like somebody would compliment him. And then he's like, oh, no, it wasn't that bad. It's fine. You know, just, you know, humble himself. But instead of humbling himself, he becomes prideful humility. You know what I mean? Um, how somebody could say, oh, great job. That was awesome. And you're like, no, it wasn't. You're not taking initiative of actually what it was. Yes, it was awesome. And you just say, oh, yes, thank you. And so this is how his spiritual pride is being, you know, uh, started in his life. And I have this little cartoon here because this can, you know, demonstrate the person, you know, the Pharisee here and the tax collector in the background. The Pharisee says, I'm really glad I'm not like that tax collector. This Pharisee can be represented of, you know, the patient because the patient is, you know, like, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm better than you. And also he could be um, thinking of, oh, well, uh, say for example, somebody says, oh, great job, that was so nice you did that. And you're like, oh no, you don't need to thank me. You know, it's prideful, you know, that way that it is. And it's just so cool how uh, C.S. Lewis relates this back to many, many previous chapters ago. And that is basically the end of, uh, Chapter 24. Any thoughts on this one? It was a heavy I, one. That was really good how that, um, like that last slide, while we're talking about the spiritual pride, kind of goes back to the previous chapter where um, how even like the good things can be twisted. Mm -hmm. slide. So like even the a Christian it's like if you're being prideful for the like proud of it for the wrong reasons yeah that's true yeah like spiritual pride being thinking like oh I've got it all figured out look at me I can do I'm so holy I'm so this I'm so that <laughs> yeah and, and the same people. way that I mean Jesus spoke about this in this uh instance this parable um, he said the one who, that went home justified was the one that said, have mercy on me, God, I'm a sinner, the tax collector in the back, mm -hmm. um, like recognizing the truth and sp spiritual pride is the thinking that we make, we make ourselves holy instead of by what we do, instead of the fact that our actions are a response to God's great grace and love for us. 
that anything good that we do, anything holy that we do, it's a response on our part to the grace that God has given us to be able to do it. It's not, um, it's not because of us. It's, yeah, we have our free will to choose to do what's good, but we also um, wouldn't be able to do that. And like, if you remember the gospel from a few weeks ago, Jesus says, um, like, remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches, right? If we, um, spiritual pride says that I'm a branch and I don't need the vine. I can do it myself. <laughs> we, we, we dry up that way and we fall off the vine. Um, but humility says the only way that I'm growing is because of Jesus, because I'm attached to the vine. And yeah, it's a conscious choice that we're, we're, we're choosing to be attached to that, but that's because of his grace too, that he loved us first, like the scriptures say, um, and ours is a response. So yeah, very good point, Nicole, too, about how this ties back to the last chapter. Um, that that being spiritual is a good thing, but we don't want it to get corrupted. Um, again, yeah, that, that humility. It feels like there's so many different kinds of temptations <laughs> reading uh -huh. this book. <laughs> Lots of them. And I think that's you realize some of the Galatian and said in the beginning, like, oh yeah, it does kind of make sense. Mm -hmm. So like being aware of them helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah because if we're not aware of what, what we're tempted by we can't fight you can't yeah fight we'll fall for the know. trap that we don't see yeah and and I, I think one of the benefits of this book is it helps us to be aware of some of the temptations that we might not have noticed before that we have in ways that we can come against them combat them um yeah yeah uh shannon could you go to the prior slide mm -hmm. please there we go yeah, and I think this is a good point, just like Nicole, you made earlier about them saying at the beginning, like the man who was just praying by just saying the words and not really meaning it. And this is that other extreme of the flaw. So you have this one guy. So looking at the two of them, the, the gentleman talking about spiritual pride as a temptation, where he's coming from a place of he's converted and has chosen the Christian faith. And now he looks back at like maybe where he was and Maybe he's being prideful about it or knowing how much he's learned and thinks about that in a prideful way. Whereas the woman's um, temptation is um, laxity in that, all right, I've always been a Christian. I've always had faith. Maybe she never really had to actively choose it. It was just part of her lifestyle growing up where we can mistake a habit for faith as opposed to like, and a great example of this is the pandemic year of like when we couldn't go to church, were we still trying to pray? Were we still trying to grow closer to God even during that time when we couldn't go to mass and our habits were all thrown off? And that's like a great test of faith sometimes. It's like, are we still willing to, to pursue the Lord when it's not easy, when, when we have to change our habits? Um, or does it just fall away? So I think that's a good... Um, test as well. If we've struggled in some area um, of faith, um, thinking about it as we have to choose, we have to be intentional about making faith a priority. And cultivating that relationship like you said earlier. Mm -hmm. Also, Is I it, think... Mm -hmm. Oh, God, Nicole. Oh, go ahead, Nicole, and then I guess... Tim. No, yeah, that was basically yeah. it. <laughs> oh. I think, too, that, like, you know, you could be... You know, I, I, I've fallen for this many, many times like you could be uh you know your your faith your your prayer life could become a habit mm -hmm. and but and, and because it's a habit you slip into it so easily that you don't really you're not really thinking what you're doing mm -hmm. you're just kind of going through the motions because mm -hmm. oh it's four o'clock I, I better do this because i've always done this at four o'clock Mm -hmm. um, and you're just kind of just like you're you're reading it, but you're not you know you're not that your mind's not there, so it's kind of like refocusing and repurposing you know your mind. Mm -hmm. It's it like something you know, it. it's still yeah. fine, but making it intentional as well. As well. Yeah, mm, yeah. It's like it's a drudgery to do that. It's like you know, um, like oh, it's four o'clock. I have to do that, but I have thousands other things to do mm -hmm. you know 
another possible thing. That's a good point. Yeah, I think also in the previous chapter, that's a um, like a big one that I fall for sometimes doubting. Um, like you said, God remembering that God and Jesus was divine and man and focusing mm -hmm. too much on one side. Mm -hmm. Because especially um, like so many, like with so much science, focus and just like dismissing that Jesus really did those things and being like, oh yeah, he's just a guy 2000 years ago who was a really great teacher and we should follow it, but not really be super faithful mm -hmm. about that he was also God. Mm -hmm. It's like, eh, eh. and it's like, I think I struggle with that doubt. I think we all have at least some time sometime in our lives but it's well, like, important to be able to recognize it too you know like oh you know devil's coming in here get out of here you're not supposed to be here um uh yeah i'm sure everyone has had like moments like that where like they're you just get frightened you're like whoa why am i thinking this scary thought you know mm -hmm. please get out of my mind and um usually always leaves once you say get out of here <laughs> for me at least yeah <laughs> like get out of here like being able to recognize it helps kind yep of sweep mm. it away mm. yes dusting off the cobwebs <laughs> yeah getting rid of the spiders mm. <laughs> you gotta clean the other corner because that one started having cobwebs <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Like, continue yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, we, do we have any other thoughts? I think we hit all of them. Let me see. I'm gonna try and not share my screen. Let's see. We can figure this out. And stop share. And I'm back. Nice. Do we get to see a Shannon? <laughs> Try to turn on my camera, figure it out. Allow. Hello. Hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a new device. You gotta allow it. Yes, I had to allow it. It is allowed. Hmm. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hey, Joseph. Hello. Hey, to everyone in uh, the virtual world watching this later. Uh, yeah, I also had. Uh, you know, uh, things like, oh man, I'm, I'm getting like notifications as we speak because I'm using my MacBook today. Uh, but oh. I was following along very carefully as usual. Um, oh no, I hear my dad sneezing in the back. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was great to be once again a part of the Screwed Tape Letters, screwed tape letters discussion today. If I'm not mistaken, there are 31 chapters. So we're, we're, uh, yeah, almost, we're almost done. We're almost yeah, done. Almost yeah. done. So we're yeah. at the end game now, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I saw that movie with uh, some close friends once and uh, yeah, I still have good memories of that. Or was it yeah. Infinity War? Yeah, Avengers Infinity War. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're in the end game now. But um, yeah. yeah, we're in the end game. We have not many chapters left. <laughs> no, in fact, we're going to continue doing two chapters a week, essentially, right? Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. That's yep. good. So That's right. it'll, it'll go through the summer, essentially. Uh, through, yeah. June. Well, through June. Through June. Through June. Sounds June good. I suppose. Yeah, hopefully we'll get, we should be able to. I think that there's not much left. If we're gonna yeah. Go. So next mm -hmm. week is chapters 25 and 26. And then 27. And 28, yep, and then so 29, the 30, and 31. And season three at the last, if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we could do three. Yeah, we'll yeah, just we have it comes. Yeah, yeah, it all depends on. The but uh, yeah, so thank you, Shannon, for leading our discussion again today. Yeah, it was fun. It and was an adventure trying to figure out the phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, and I knew that one of my students did it one time, and I'm like, I, I know that there's a way. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. And thank you everybody for your contributions as well, um, and making this book study so great. And like I said, like Joseph said, and, and Shannon said, we're gonna keep going on until we finish. So it'll be a few more weeks, a few more Thursdays. Um, you can catch up with stuff on on YouTube, like and subscribe. Um, and leave a comment below <laughs> nice <laughs> comment 
upcoming <laughs> stuff. So, so, for notifications. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> a reminder for everybody and everybody who might watch this later, we have uh, our special baccalaureate mass on Sunday. Um, we're going to be honoring the seniors of 2020 and 2021. Um, and it's going to be at 2.30 St. Agnes Parish in Clark, Clark, New Jersey. Um, you can refer to the other Instagram and Facebook posts for more information or the emails or email me uh, for more info. We're going to have cake and other lovely foods uh, that day. And, um, and then we head into our summer events. Woo. So our first summer event is actually going to be on June 6th. Sunday, June 6th. Uh, the time for that is TBA, but we're going to go for a hike at Cheesequake, the Cheesequake Park. Uh, so we're going to go for a nice outdoor hike then. Um, but more details are going to follow regarding that. So that's everything I got for announcements, Shannon. Cool. Let's uh, finish it off with the prayer. In the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, we uh, thank you for this awesome uh, book club study and that I was able to figure out the technology on my phone. Worked out great. Uh, and we just pray that we have a great rest of the week and that we have a fun event on Sunday with the uh, fun get together event to kick off our summertime fun and to wrap up the spring semester. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next time. <laughs>